Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. So I'm Wan Sheng. I'm a genomic scientist at Boston Children's Hospital and working in the Children's Rural Disease Collaborative. Uh, and today I'd love to share with everyone how we are leveraging the nanopore technology uh, to maximize the power of genomic sequencing in pediatric rare disease. Uh, so at Boston Children's Hospital, uh, we are constantly pushing the boundaries of pediatric health care. And one way we are achieving that is through the Children's Rural Disease Collaborative, or CRDC for short, uh, where our goal is to make genomic testing and research a routine practice. Uh, so you may wonder why we are interested in rare disease. Uh, so even though, individually speaking, each disease only impacts a small population of people, uh, however, collectively, they are surprising. Uh, surprising surprisingly common, uh, impacting about 5% of the population. Uh, and because of the rarity and complexity of those diseases, uh, the patient often face multi-year diagnostic odyssey and sometimes receive multiple misdiagnoses uh, before getting the final answer. Uh, however, a relief for us to know is that about 80% of the rare diseases are associated with genetic variant, which means if we have the capacity to offer the patient sequencing, uh, we may have a high chance to find the underlying genetic abnormality. And this is where the CRDC comes in. Uh, so what set us apart from the pure research-based group uh, is that we are consisted of not only brilliant research scientists, but also physician scientists that are working at the front line. Uh, so since our establishment in 2018, we've recruited almost 60 cohort covering hundreds of rare diseases. And we are also providing sequencing to about 1,000 patients families each year. And as a result, uh, we now have a single repository with more than 13,000 sequenced families from both research and clinical. Uh, so even though uh, what, I, uh, what I talk about today is purely in the research realm, uh, what we'd really love to do is to harvest what we are learning from those, use it to uh, identify and fill in the unmet health need, um, and use that to push the evolution and the improvement of clinical care, and ultimately end the lengthy journey for BCH patient. Uh, so to achieve that, uh, we designed the CRDC genomic analysis platform, uh, which helped to streamline data generation, harmonization, analysis and sharing. Uh, for instance, uh, using the short read data we have, those are short read whole exome and genome samples, uh, we see we are already observing a significant increase in diagnostic yield uh, compared to more traditional approach, such as microarray or gene panel based approach. However, we all know that the short read data is not perfect. Uh, it struggles at genomic location uh, with low complexity or with complex structural variant. And those are situations where long read shines. So what we'd really love to know is, can we take advantage of the long read sequencing te technology to push the boundary even further? Will we be able to increase the diagnostic yield? Um, and with that in mind, uh, we initiated the Beacon project in collaboration with Oxford Nanopore. Uh, so our goal is to make long read sequencing available to more than 350 families with prior negative genetic testing. Uh, at Boston Children's Hospital, this is led by Dr. Wendy Chang, Dr. Alan Bax, and this is also co-led by Dr. Matane Jane uh, at Northeastern University. So we aim to sequence and analyze 1,000 nanopore samples through a research setting. And here we are focusing on patients that have had previously negative genetic testing, and a significant proportion of them would have previous negative short read whole exome or whole genome data. And we are also giving prioritization to families where parental data are available. Uh, here on the right, we can see that uh, as of earlier this month, we've already collected almost 350 samples across four different cohorts, and about 170 of those have been fully sequenced. Uh, and compared to a uh, short read whole genome sequencing data of comparable depths, uh, we see that the long read data is able, um, not only able to recapture almost all the, all the SMVs that we're seeing in the short read data, but also is providing us a significant proportion of new calling results. And if we focus on those short read and long read only calls, uh, we see that they are enriched in genomic locations where mapping could be an issue. For instance, at the central mirrors, telomeres, or regions with lots of segmental duplications. Uh, so 
now with the data coming in, uh, we started to work on integrating them into the CRDC platform. Uh, so we are sequencing our data at three different locations. Uh, some of those are sequenced at Oxo Nanopo in California, some of those in Northeastern University, and the rest are at BCH uh, Mountain Center. Uh, so after getting the data, uh, we perform base calling and alignment to the HD38 genome using Dorado and Minibab2, and then the data is pushed to the IP2Me human variation workflow, which generate not only the calling result for small variant, uh, but also structural variant, copy number variant, um, short tandem repeat, as well as file specific for DM isolation. So then we harvest all those results and integrated them into the CRDC analysis platform uh, using customized tertiary workflow. Uh, for instance, uh, for small variant, we're able to return those back to the clinicians and the researchers uh, via a web-based interface in collaboration with GenDX. Um, and for CMV and SWIS, uh, we design customized workflow, and now it's having a tool that integrates CMV, SV, and RE SMV uh, to help identify compound hydrozygous variant. Uh, we are also annotating those calls with their impact on genes. Uh, disease association, inheritance, and population frequency information from both CRDC dataset and publicly available dataset. And more recently, we also started to incorporate the phenotype-based gene ranking uh, using publicly available tools such as Emily, uh, Shepard, and HPO3. So now with those two at hand, we are already seeing lots of exciting outcomes from this collaboration. Uh, for instance, uh, here is an example we identified together with Dr. Wendy Chang and Dr. Madrick Jane. Uh, so this is a case where we identified a de novo sick KB deletion impacting the 3 and UTR of HMGA2. Uh, so this is a patient with previous negative G uh, whole exome sequencing and is presented with overgrowth syndrome as well as super Teeth. In the long read, we see a deletion that is eliminating almost the entire 3 and UTR of HMGA2. And also in the methylation data, uh, here we also observe haplotype specific hypermethylation that is extending beyond the deleted region. And what's intriguing about this case is that the phenotype associated with HMGA2 uh, can have two distinct representations. Uh, one is growth, uh, one is overgrowth, which fits really well with the patient symptom, uh, while the other is growth restriction. And this is, depends on whether this is a gain, a gain of function mutation or loss of function mutation. And because of that, uh, the lab have decided to pursue expression study to better understand the mechanism of this. Um, and the second example we'd love to show uh, was identified together with Dr. Alan Bax. Uh, so this is a patient diagnosed with nemaline myopathy. Uh, so in previously short read whole axis data, the lab is able to identify a single pathogenic mutation at the gene called nebula. Uh, however, the, the gene is known to cause the disease, but it's a recessive gene, and the second hit has been missing. Uh, but now in the long read data, uh, we not only see the previously known pathogenic variant, but also the missing second hit. Uh, so it turns out this second hit is in a region with triplication, uh, where long read have trouble mapping to. And the other challenge about this case is unfortunately the parental data is not available. Um, and the two variants are about 90 KB apart from each other. So if we just have the short ray data, it will be almost impossible for us to figure out uh, those two variants impacting two different alleles. But in the long ray data, we see that the entire region is really well faced. Um, and it's e really easy to figure out that actually those two variants are on two different haplotypes, allowing us to solve this case. And now, uh, looking through all 34 families that we've been analyzed so far, uh, we're already seeing 11 potential interesting positive findings uh, with a range of different variant types. And I hope everyone could appreciate, that, appreciate this uh, finding. It's certainly a remarkable outcome for us um, because this really speaks for the power of long-range sequencing in pediatric rare disease research. 
Um, and with that, I'd like to say thank you to all the CRDC investigators who contributed to this project, uh, especially Wendy and Alan, who is leading the Beacon Project at Boston Children's Hospital, uh, and also all my co-workers at BCH Research Informatics, uh, especially Piotr, Shear, and Corney, who's providing a lot of leadership and guidance along the way, uh, and also our collaborator, uh, everyone from Mitten's lab, uh, and last but not least, everyone from Oxford Nanopore who made this uh, a possibility.